What's going on guys? Welcome back to Season 7 of my NHL 22 Calgary Flames Franchise Mode Series. I apologize guys for the wait on this one. I know it's been over a week, but I was really busy with all the NHL 23 videos. And then on the weekend, I actually went away to Cedar Point and Kalahari for my birthday. So uh, I didn't have a lot of time then, but we're getting back into the franchise here. As you guys can see, we're currently 5-0-1 in the preseason. McDavid there has got 11 points in 6 games. If you guys missed the last episode, I feel like you've had a lot of time to watch it, but the Maple Leafs have won their third Stanley Cup in four years. Looking like a little bit of a dynasty. I wouldn't mind running into them in the Stanley Cup final here, you know, taking out the current kings of the NHL. So, I'll show you guys our lineup here. I think we have a very, very good team. Gensel, McDavid, Lindholm's the first line with the plus five. They're all 96 plus. McDavid should be playing like a 102 overall player. We'll see about that. Uh, Coronado, Jackman, Huberdeau also get a plus five. Coronado's going to be playing like a 90. We've got him on a great contract, 950K next six years. So, love to see him grow. Uh, Blue in here is a rookie, 19 years old, 84 overall. On the third line there with Geeky Lambert, definitely the young gun line. Rizika Phillips, IFL on the fourth line is also very solid. Defensively here, we got Uyghur Nemich top pair at the plus five. Kiva Harju Hannafin on the second. Stanley Kuhlman's on the bottom pair. In terms of the goaltending, we got Andre starting. Wolf backing him up. I saw you guys point out in the last episode, I think it was Levi was like 87, 88 overall. Could have signed him for $2 million. Just completely missed him in free agency. Um, in terms of special teams, guys, we got plus five in both four mans. I'm actually only running one defenseman on the power plays in Kiva Harju because he's got perfect hands, 99 passing puck control. You can see his deking hand eye there. But I feel like overall our forwards are a lot better than the defensemen, at least offensively. So I'm going to try this. You can see the power play. Huberto, McDavid, Gensel, Kiva Harju, Blue in plus five. The second unit there, Coronado, Lindholm, Jack, and Geeky, Uyghur. So, sorry, power play does have two defensemen. The four-man just has the one. PK, great chemistry here. Plus five first unit, plus three second. Three-man even, plus five on that first unit. Jack and Uyghur, Kiva Harju. Jack we traded for when he hadn't gotten drafted yet. I actually noticed two guys. Jack was the first overall pick in 2022 by the Devils, above Shane Wright and Slavkowski. So that's kind of crazy the Devils willing to trade him to us for really not all that much. Hopefully it actually turns into a true first overall pick, gets up to like a 90 overall. That would be amazing. I almost forgot guys, AHL wise, Veselon and Pelche still on the first line is pretty solid. Even the second there was Zary, LaPierre, and Geeky. Third line, fourth line, like HL team has some depth for sure. Defensively here we got Solon who's an 80, Curry, 77 overall medium elite. Douglas there, 78, medium top four. CeCe's an 80, I signed him, didn't need him. Poria even, 79, medium top four, but looking like a bust. Mendoza here, also medium elite, like, HL defense is so good. We got Blomqvist, 82 starting. Christie there, 77, high elite backup. So, um, even with the stacked NHL team, we still have a lot of really good young players up and coming. And I'll show you guys our ratings here before we start the sim. We've got 100 offense, 91 defense, 91 goaltending. So, let's see if we can uh, hopefully make a deep run here in the playoffs, win a Stanley Cup. Let's get started. And it's now in December, guys. We have a record of 20-12-3. I feel like we started out a little bit stronger than we played the last month or so. You can see a good amount of losses there, but still uh, not doing too bad. Second in the division there behind the Canucks. Only one point back. AHL-wise, 26-8 first in the division. Yeah, AHL team is nuts. Pelche there, leading scorer. NHL, Cooper Doe's leading scorer. Wow, on the second line, beating out McDavid. Pretty impressive. And we're off the deadline here, guys. Record of 39, 19, and 4. So, again, we're still playing really well. First in the division now, 82 points. 10-point lead there on the Kings. AHL team, also first in their division. 95 points with a 45, 13, and 5 record. Uh, Pelche there, still leading score. Would love if he could actually break the NHL, but right now a lot of competition for a second nine overall player. Hubert O there, 82 points. So, even if he goes scoreless the rest of the season, he's still going to finish as a point-per-game player. That's pretty impressive. So, um, we'll get to the deadline. I feel like her team's really good. I don't know... Where are we going to improve it? Um, I'm also not exactly sure how much cap space we have. I should definitely double check that. But Timo Meyer there, top player on the block, 92 overall. Rensky, one year left, 90 overall. For 90 overall defenseman, that value is not that high, probably because he is a pending free agent. Same with Provorov there. Kucherov, 89 overall. Alex Tuck was making 11.5. Shifley, Seth Jones, Evangelista there. Put Coles in. Anthony Mantha. Okay, so. I want to see what the cap space is like that we have to work with. I also want to see how Andre's doing, because I think this is his last year with us. So we have about $3 million in cap space there, you know, give or take a couple hundred K. McDavid somehow has less than uh, max trade value. How's he doing this year? He's only got 64 points, which obviously is over point per game, but like, Hubert Doe is absolutely crushing it right now on that second line with less minutes as well. Um, so Andre here, let's see, 0.908, 2.84. It's pretty good. Um, I don't think I need to trade him away or anything like that, but... I do think we could probably have Wolf be the starter next year. Those stats aren't bad either, 0.904, 281. And then Christie, if he gets good enough, could back him up. Or even could have 
Blomqvist back him up as well. Definitely have a lot of options there in goal, especially with LaRose there, high elite too. So I don't know what we're looking for. I guess, you know, just a player that makes sense to trade for. Maybe somebody who's got lower value than they should. All right, guys, looking around the league, I see the Islanders have this Solomonson player on the block, unsigned. I also noticed the Islanders are crushing it, 41, 17, and 3. But solid defenseman here, 23 years old, 82 overall, medium top 4. I feel like it just kind of gives us another option. Maybe could replace Stanley next season. 88 awareness, 90 stick check. Looks to like just be a really good all-around D-man. Value's not that high either because he set out this year. So offering up a second round pick and Antilla, who's just kind of your standard medium top nine forward. I think this is a good trade for us for next year. See what they say. Trade's accepted. Okay, so we were not going to get a player that good in the second round. I think that's awesome. And next year, guys, trying a big trade to Montreal Canadiens for this medium elite prospect they have on the block for some reason. Playing for the Winnipeg guys, 19 years old, 26 overall. Just a very good two-way forward. Like, look at the X-Factors there. He's got the yoink zone ability, stick him up, shut down, no contest. Like, should be an amazing third liner in the future. They're not really doing amazing. Like, they're a little bit above 500. Not sure why they have him on the block, but... I'm offering up LaRose here, one of our high league goalies. He's a lower rated of the two. Uh, Picard here, medium top six forward prospect, plus Lee, a low league defenseman. So, I mean, they're getting back like a pretty good haul here if they are, you know, looking for a goalie. Value's pretty equal. Heineman's just there for the roster spot. So, we'll see what they say. Trades rejected. Not sure what you're sending us. I could also do another version of this trade where it's just LaRose in a first. I feel like I'd rather trade the other stuff than the first rounder, but I think for Connor, it's worth it. They say yes. Okay, so a lot to give up there. Highly goalie and a first round pick, but we had a medium league prospect. And speaking of that, guys, look at our players here. Every single person on the first page, medium league or higher. You then have Mendoza, Jackman, Curry, all medium elite. Like, that's nuts. And the trade deadline's now complete. I'm happy with the two moves we made. Wow, a blockbuster just went down. Robert Thomas to the Boston Bruins in exchange for Hampus Lindholm a third and Manderville. I'm not sure how good Manderville is, but he better be pretty good. Otherwise, Boston fleeced the Blues there. Anderson Dolan goes to the Senators. Uh, let's see, Cal Clegg to the Panthers. Ferraro to the Coyotes. Sokolov to the Canucks. Wu goes to the Panthers in exchange for Cole Lind. Um, let's see, Ryan Johnson, the Oilers. Buffalo gets Zach Hyman, pretty big trade. Philip Broberg to the Kraken. Oilers are kind of selling there. Second round pick. Um, our trade there for Solomon Sin. Let's see, Anthony Mantha to the Rangers. Interesting. Marcus Soto to the Bruins as well. Bruins just added two top six forwards and Really didn't give up that much, it looks like. Isaac Lundstrom to the Jets. Johnny Beecher there to the Senators. White Cloud to the Panthers. Pa Nolan Patrick to the Canadians. Colin Pareko joins the Sharks. And Cody Glass goes to the Dallas Stars. Okay, so a pretty active trade deadline. Definitely that Robert Thomas trade, I think, was the biggest. Max Jones is on waivers. Let's see. Sunny on overall, 30 years old. Okay, yeah, we can just decline that. And now the two trades we made, guys, didn't affect our roster at all, so it still looks the same. Again, we're playing well, so if it's not broke, don't fix it. I still can't believe Huberdeau, second line right now, and those are his stats. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, he is on the first power play there with McDavid. He's on the first four-man, but uh, still pretty crazy. Hopefully, he can just kind of continue to go off, maybe win our roster. And we're see here, guys, a record of 53-25-4, so I think that's 110 points on the year. It is first in the division there, but... Islanders 115 beat us out for the President's Trophy by 5. AHL team had 113 points, which isn't enough to win the AHL. They finished second there behind the Palm Springs Hockey Club, I think HD stands for. So both teams, I believe, finished second in their leagues. Huberdeau there, 109 points. He popped off. Pelche had 94, also very solid. So let's see if Huberdeau's 109 points is good enough for that Art Ross. McDavid 95 isn't bad at all, but I don't know how he's honestly not putting up more points. 97 overall with a plus 5 chem. Uh, Jackman, 80 points. He's more of a two-way guy on our PKs. I'm not even sure if he's actually on the power play. Wow, really, really impressive. Actually, I can see right here, power play points. He did have 25 power play points, so yeah, he must be on the second unit. I don't think he's on the four-man, though. That is very impressive, again, for more of a two-way guy. 46 goals with an 86 shot. That's also crazy. Uh, Gensel, 78. Lindholm, 74. Coronado at 72. He's going to go up in rating, I think, from 85. That's awesome to see. So, six guys there, 70 plus points. Nemich and Uyghur, two defensemen at 50 plus. And Nemich didn't even play the power play. So, maybe Nemich needs some power play time because that's also very impressive. Kivaharju there, 43 on the power play. Cause again, expected more from him with 99 passing. Geeky at almost 40. Same with Bluin. I was hoping for a bit more from him from his rookie year because he was power play, third liner. That's all right, though. No Calder, but hopefully he'll continue to grow. Lambert there, 37. Phillips, IFL, just going to be the fourth liners and the defenseman. Goaltending here, Ottinger, 0.911 and 2.72. 
quite good. Wolf not far behind though, 0 0.907, 2.71. We get him a lot cheaper, obviously, 1.1 mil. We let go of Ottinger, maybe we can get like a third round pick for his signing rights. AHL here, so after Pelche, you got Stillman almost a point per game. Hopefully you can get up to like an 80, maybe call him up or something. Veselin and Lapierre, oh wow, 77, geeky 70, so five guys, 70 plus points. I feel like Beck there, 55, maybe he'll grow a bit. Curry there, 55, as a defenseman, already a 78. I think that guy's going to be a stud for us, so I'm um, overall pretty happy with the AHL team. Goalie-wise, Blomqvist probably should have better stats than that, especially with the D in front of him, the team in front of him. That's a bit surprising. We'll check the entire league now, guys. Lean score, Matt Barzell, 124. Are you kidding me? Only 19 goals, but had 105 assists. I'm assuming is Michkov playing with him? He is. Okay, so that's why. Michkov, 62 goals there. On the line, Barzell. Wow. 105 assists. That is ridiculous. Michkov, yeah, he's a 94 now. That's insane. Dry Silo, 112. Robertson, 109. Tyler Huberdeau, so fourth highest score in the NHL. Goudreau there, still killing on Columbus. Even the line they left. Kaprizov there. Rantanen, Eichel. I'm actually looking for Lekermacki, 101. Jeez. I'm looking for Bedard, because Wyatt Johnson, 99, is an 88 now. Um, Michikov's a 94 overall. I'm wondering what Bedard is. Look at this, guys. Crosby was still a point per game there with the Capitals, so we could have kept him, but obviously he didn't really have the money. And I found Connor Bedard. He was on Philly, which is actually what I thought, just under point per game. He's a 95, though. He's actually higher rated, even though he put up, what, 44 less points, I want to say, than Michikov. Again, uh, clearly, like, the way to put up points in this game is have that Playmaker sniper duo before it was Line A Goudreau and House Barzell and Michka. Um, defensively here, Makar leading scorer usually is him. Um, goalie stats, Andre had the most wins in the entire NHL. Let's go. Uh, save percentage is going to go to Shashirkin there, point nine five for a starter. Goals against for a starter, uh, actually Hofer there, 2.67 with the Avs. Rookie skaters, most points, Klotz 49. Okay, so Blue with 39 was actually only 10 points back. But Klotz, they're also at a plus 36. So if we actually had him in the top six, he definitely could have won the Calder. But um, again, we're more about the team success, I would say, uh, than, you know, one player winning the Calder Trophy. Now looking at the entire league, guys, like I said, I think we finished second. We did there. First in the West. You had five teams with 100 plus points. Um, wow, St. Louis, Vegas kind of squeak in there. Last in the NHL is going to be the Boston Bruins. Okay, so they traded for Robert Thomas. They traded for March so and they finished last. That is... Interesting, uh, um, to say the least. Most goals for the Islanders, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, we were fifth, though, in the entire NHL. And then the best goals against here was actually us. Wow, so Andre winning William Jennings. Feel bad for Shashurkin. Had his team with the second lowest goals against. They still don't even make the playoffs. That is definitely tough to see. So, uh, speaking of the playoffs, guys, first round here, we're going to be playing the Golden Knights or the wildcard team in the Central St. Louis Blues. It is the Golden Knights. Okay, I believe they actually beat us. Uh, the first year, and I think the third year as well. So looking for some revenge on them. Stones down to 86. Eichel though 92. Garland there, first line. Burkowski, 79 Dean, and Olofsson. Okay, take advantage of 79 Dean. Like, come on. I feel like our matchup should be a lot better there. Um, fourth line's pretty average. Defensively here, Theodore's still there. Shaika, Regula, Graves, Kulak, Murray. Other than Theodore, they don't have a lot. Logan Thompson there, 84. is decent, but nothing crazy. We should beat these guys. I mean, and that doesn't mean a lot in the sim, but we really should beat these guys. Let's see. First two games here at home. One and one. Going to Vegas now. One and one. So two and two on this series. I do actually want to see here. Like I said, we are a much, much better team. How do the ratings break down? So we have 100, 90, 91, 93, 87, 83. Yeah, we're better in, in every single facet. Almost like 10 overall better. We should be beating these guys. So, game five here at home. It's a loss. We're down three to two. We have to win the next two games back to back. I don't understand the playoff sim. I don't get it. Our team is so much better. Regular season success shows that. 1-1. One, one, Kairu Gensel. 2-1. to one, Let's go. Give a hard you power play goal. 3-3. Three to three, Are you kidding me? Phillips gets one. Garland gets two. We need OT here. We're shooting them by 10. I don't get this game. I don't get this game. All right, guys. So I guess we can the AHL team now. Luckily, they beat the Gulls there in the first round. The Tucson Roadrunners up next. Um, AHL team, obviously, second in the league. And they get beat by Tucson. Five games there in round number two. <laughs> I feel like, other than that second year, both the NHL and AHL team have had pretty terrible playoff luck. And look at this, guys. I thought the St. Louis Blues got fleeced by the Bruins. Trade away Robert Thomas. 
They go on to win the Stanley Cup. Utica Comets there winning the Calder Cup. I mean, we'll have to check out, honestly, the St. Louis Blues team. Edmonton, first overall pick. Back at it again. Winnipeg, two there. Boston, three. I don't get it, guys. I do not get it. Coronado had over a point per game in the playoffs. Um, I do want to see. I can't. We can look at contracts here. We can't look at lines. Like, what does this Stanley Cup winning St. Louis Blues team look like? Like, they can't be that crazy. Line A, Kucher Oh, wow, they traded for Kucherov. Casper there, 89. He's actually gone from high top six to medium elite. Jerry McCann's an 88. Jake Neighbors there, really good contract for an 88. Smaby, Gunler. I mean, they got some good players for sure. Take a look at goalies. They got an 84 Blackwood. So, you look at it there, the first page, it goes from 91 to 85. They have an 84 goalie. Ours is 97 to 86 with an 89, or the 90 goalie, sorry. Andre went up in rating. I don't understand. We have really good chemistry. Um, I think our coach, last I checked, is good. Um, let's see. Yeah, we have an A-plus head coach. Staff chemistry could be better, but I don't know, guys. That's just a tough one. So we'll look at the awards here. Look at the playoff tree. See what the St. Louis Blues went through there. So they beat the Coyotes in six, Wild in six, Canucks in six, and then the Buffalo Sabres there in five. Looking at the awards next. So, of course, Islanders President's Trophy. Individual awards here. Barzell, Art Ross, as well as the Hart Trophy. McCarr, James Norris again. Barzell got the Lady Bing. Huge year for him. Klosser on the Leafs, Calder Trophy, Jake Neighbors, Con Smythe, wow. Shashurkin did get the Vesna, but of course Andre there got the Leon Jennings, uh, Matt Roy there, Bill Masterton, Canucks coach Jack Adams, Lundell Selke, Barzell, Ted Lindsay, and then Michkov there, Marie Richard. So AHL wise, I'm wondering, I think we won the conference, right? So we should have, yeah, Stockton Heat there, Pacific Division as well as, actually never mind, Pacific Palm Springs from the Western Conference as well. So just the division, Kahu most points and MVP, Harkin there most goals, Co best rookie, Carlson, best defenseman. Oh my gosh. John Carlson down the AHL. That's kind of nuts. Aiden Hill, best goalie. Galchenyuk, MVP of the playoffs. Cahoon there, sportsmanship. Otto Vine in there, community involvement. And then Aiden Hill, lowest goals against. All right, so we'll get to the draft now, guys. Obviously, have a big decision to make on Ottinger. Can we keep him? Because if not, definitely want to trade his rights. Malkin there retires to the Montreal Canadiens AHL team. Stammer, Bergeron, Sagan, Stone, Carlson, Tarasenko, Gallagher, John Carlson. Wow. Petrangelo there, Krug, Barry, some huge, huge names retiring. A couple spits there, Henrique and Ellis. Cam Fowler as well, geez. Um, check out goalies here. Bobrovsky. Other than that, actually, everyone was a free agent. And so look at the draft class here, guys. You got four medium leads at the top, two guaranteed high top sixes after that. This guy's a gem, probably medium lead. So I think uh, picks four and five are going to get screwed here. And this guy's the actual gem. Um, we'll take a look, speaking of that. Are there any, like, late? Oh my gosh. That might be the most gems I've ever seen. Uh, guarantee medium top six, 123. So first overall doesn't really help us out at all. 38. Um, let's see, 16 doesn't help. 55, 85, those do help. Um, this guy, unknown gem. I've never seen that. How is he a gem if he's completely unknown? Austrian Griba, 252. That'll be like a seventh round pick. Okay, our scouts went off this year. Like, that's so many gems. I've never seen that. Um, I think that's eight gems in this draft class. Okay. Potential here. Um, guaranteed meme elite left winger, Terrell Dreiger, 104. So our scouts are killing it. Unfortunately, the team just can't get done in the playoffs. This goalie here is probably medium elite, rank 172. That's also very, very good. And next year, guys, I'm actually trying to trade Carson Kuhlman's the Buffalo Sabres for a third and seventh round pick. Uh, he's 25 years old, only 80 overall still. Medium top 4D potential, but he's making 2.25. We have a lot of you know young defensemen that could take his spot for cheap. Get a couple picks here. We know there's a lot of you know gems in this draft. Try and land some of them, see what the Sabres say. Trade is rejected. Let's see if the Islanders here will do the same trade. I feel like, you know, it's a pretty good move for him, playing with Barzell and Michkov. And they do. And I was actually looking at all the contracts, guys, for our best players. Everyone still has term left, so we don't have to trade away Andre yet. We could keep him for at least one more year. Um, then there'll be some guys like Kevin Harder's going to need a big raise. Uh, Uyghur there. Hopefully he's a, you know, cheaper contract, but uh, definitely could bring him back. Look at the difference there. 84 overall, medium elite first overall, 77 medium elite second. So if we do decide to bring Andre back, Wolf would still be the backup. I think I want Christie definitely to be the AHL starter, so maybe we can get something here for Blancfist. Now the Islanders like him, so why not try and make another trade with them, get a fourth round pick? I think we could actually maybe get a fourth and a sixth here potentially. They say yes. Wow, okay. So uh, we're adding a lot of mid picks here, which is what I need. Like, look at all that. 
I think we're gonna hit on almost all these picks. So just into our pick here, guys, at the end of the third round, we'll see how the rest of the first round went. Uh, Rita there, 75 medium elite, then the two high top sixes. Actually, no, the Ducks get a medium elite defenseman. They did not mess up. Gervais there goes six, so good on the Ducks there. Penguins, though, France in 78 medium elite. What a pick there at seven. Um, looks like the rest of the first round is just medium top six forwards, medium top four defensemen. So our pick is pretty easy here. Um, we're taking him slightly early, but I'll be taking Drieger there, guaranteed medium elite. I mean, what a pick this is, end of the third round. Only 40 in overall, but still um, a great, great pick. And our next pick, guys, at 123, there's somebody I want. We actually have back-to-back -back picks. Um, I'm hoping Dean Nicola, gem, guaranteed medium top six. And 57 overall, medium top six forward, not bad at all. And we're going right back up to the podium here. I'm probably just going to take like our next highest pinned guy. Um, Mackinnon is a goalie. Okay, maybe not, honestly. I think I'd rather go for something else. This goalie here could be medium elite. I think I'd rather, honestly, Ryder Schlemko. A little bit, uh, you know, lower ranked, but I want to make sure I get him. And he is medium elite. There we go. So, so far, with our first three picks, we even started drafting the third round. We've done very, very well. And we're now in the fifth round here. This Mick Mullen guy is the next to go. Supposed to be a low top four. We'll see if there's anybody better. I honestly think I'd rather go for this Heikinen guy who could be medium top six. Low top four defensemen, especially if they're low rated, aren't really that great. 61 medium top nine, but for the fifth round, that's not bad at all. Look at that. Mick Mullen is actually only a low top six, so uh, we definitely made the right pick. He is 60 overall, but still pretty bad potential. Reichel there guaranteed medium top six defenseman, but I'm looking for a little bit better than that. We take a chance on Tumu Heikinen here. Potential medium lead goalie. Let's go for it. Finish. And a medium backup. All right, that's our first miss. All right, guys, next year I'm trying to get a couple seventh round picks in this draft from the Coyotes for a sixth next year. There's just a lot of prospects I want to take a chance on, so I want those picks. Coyotes say yes. There we go. So, I mean, there's the one gem who's ranked 300, which I don't think I've ever seen before, like the unknown 300 ranked gem. It's like crazy to me. We actually have a couple more back to back picks. Nightingale, guarantee medium top nine, four year NHL ETA. I guess I'll take him because he's the next highest ranked. 58 overall, not terrible. And now this next pick, guys, I want to take Hamilinen. Probably low top six. He's also probably NHL ATA three years. That's actually really good. And 63 overall, low top nine. So the rating's decent. Potential definitely could have been better. Uh, we're now picking at the end of the seventh round. A lot of guys still left. So we got a guaranteed low top six there in Reefers. We got this gem here in Griba. Um, I guess Griba's the next to go based on central scouting rankings. Unknown gem. I'm very curious. 52 low elite. Yeah, what a pick. Um, pick 220 now. I'm thinking for this one, we'll take the guaranteed low top six in Reefers, the German. And 57 overall, that's not bad. We still have one more pick here. The last pick of the draft. I always seem to have the last pick of the draft. Axelson there could be low top six. So I'm either thinking him. Wolski there is probably a low elite defenseman. Also, you got this Dillman guy who's <laughs> Rank 813, so he's probably not low elite because that seems ridiculous. So we'll go Wolski here. Hopefully he's a low elite defenseman. Low top four defenseman. Last pick of the draft. That's not bad. So no first, second round pick. I think we still did very, very well. And we actually have to re-sign our head coach now, who of course has that A-plus overall. Cannot lose him. Uh, we don't have the budget for him. Luckily, our mode's turned off, so we'll just, you know, overpay him here and hopefully... I'll say yes. And so we're at the resign phase here, guys. As you can see at the bottom, we got $10 million in cap space. And like I was mentioning before, really no one to resign. I see Mackenzie Weger here, 87 overall, making 10.7. So if he does come back to the team, he's definitely taking a pay cut. So I'm thinking maybe an under one year deal would make sense because we'll have more money next year. Give a hard deal, we need to raise. So I'll probably take, you know, whatever money we save on Weger. Coronado now at 86. Uh, Nemich, though, I just noticed, is actually 89. So he's gone up by one more. Huberdeau, I think, should have probably gone up, but he stayed the same, which is fine. So Solomon's in here, 84 overall. He wants 5 million bucks. That's going to be tough. Luckily, we can qualify. I have fellow doesn't need a new contract, 1.5. I think we got other guys can play the fourth line. He was, you know, a good value signing when we had him. Uh, best line in here. We're still a really cheap AHL guy. Don't mind keeping him at all. Um, after that, Solomon here, 2780, 800k. I mean, could be an NHL guy, probably not. CC34, he's gone. Uh, Razika's actually dropped in rating, and he wants more money. So I think uh, we're getting a new look fourth line here. Protus is now an 80, so he might be back on it. 825K, great contract. We'll do two years there, 900K, or exactly what he wants, 875. Uh, Poirier is now an 80 again. 
and he wants way too much we'll qualify probably just trade him away honestly so we'll check Andrew here what is he gonna want for a contract eight million bucks six-year deal so that is probably not gonna work uh, with the defenseman we have but we could sign him and they just play hardball with that D-man we got also does he go cheaper on one year he does so maybe actually a 7.5 one-year deal for Andre we could squeeze in. There we go, Andre did say yes, yeah, 7.5 for one year. Protis, like I said, probably be a fourth liner. Solin, I'm not sure, best of line in there. So it says we got 3.6 million now. I think if we waited out, we could probably get Solomonson signed. And other than that, I think everybody else is just AHL contracts. And so it's not a free agency here, guys. Obviously, we can only really sign super good value contracts, pretty much under a million bucks. Alex Tuck wants 17 million. Michkov wants 16. He's an RFA. Alex Newell's up to 92. You got Gormley there. Sanderson. Uh, UFA actually. You put Coles in. Gauthier. Let's sort this by rating. I see Shabbat there's a 91. He wants 11 million. Uh, Provorov 89 for 7.2. Actually looks to be a pretty good, decent ask. Shifley 8.6. A lot of very good players available. Um, Sam Bennett wants 9.5. Theo Lindstein there. 10.5. Ryan Palin got up to an 88. That's kind of crazy. So... Um, a lot of good players, obviously, like I said, we can't afford any of them, but uh, it's still good to see. Krasov, 86 for 3.4 is pretty good. Goalies, let's see. I, I got to keep my eye out here for a $2 million 87 goalie. Steros wants 8, Skinner wants 5. Uh, I guess Bennington's the best deal there, 83 for 2.3. Alan Felt was in our AHL team for a bit. 83 overall, so he's 1 overall less than Wolf. We're only saving 200 k I think I'm fine uh, just keeping Wolf. Now, we do need an AHL backup. So we'll take a look here at two-way goalies. But actually, guys, I just accidentally sorted by potential before going two-way. This Vitaloma guy, 2481, immediately potential. Could have him in the AHL. Um, let's offer him. Does he get like, ooh, oh, that's good. That's that's the that's the sweet spot. We'll offer him here 900. Let's do a million bucks for three years. It's only asking for 800K at three years. One of those weird ones where it's actually cheaper longer term than short. See what he says. Uh, worst case, I think he should at least, you know, have some value for us. So, I guess we'll check two-way. Yeah, you can see just medium started Lennox there, but not as good. Um, two-way skaters, we got one low elite. How many uh, contract spots do I have? 45 of 50, so four to play with. Um, Greg there, 2580. Could be a solid fourth liner for us. I'm surprised he didn't really grow there for the Sanders. So, I'll offer him a contract. Uh, two years there. Even three years, honestly, 950k. I think I'm fine with. 2474, 2062, medium top six. Uh, Peckham there, I'll definitely give him a contract offer as well. And look at this, guys. I think I just found our new fourth line center, Sean Monahan here. 82 overall, asking for only 800K. Bring him back to the Flames. I feel like, you know, obviously he just left in real life, but I don't mind this at all. I'll do 900K there. He's 33, so that should be fine until he's, you know, 35 or whatever. And next year, guys, trying to make a trade to the Anaheim Ducks for their third and fourth round pick in next year's draft. I mentioned Poirier, don't really kind of need any more, looking like a bust. I mean, I guess not a bust, but he's a bomb pair guy. I was hoping he'd be a top four. Viega here they want for some reason. 22 years old, only a 66. He doesn't really have enough time, I don't think, to you know become a player. So trading them with a seventh for a third and a fourth is great value for us. Ducks say no, sweeten the value just a touch, though. Um, I don't have a sixth this year, but could do a sixth the year after. They do say yes, okay, so... I feel like that was a solid trade for us. You can see, still have a lot of picks in next year's draft. Uh, we'll see what all those players say that we made offers on. Two, I uh, gave the head coach a new offer once we kind of could offer whatever we wanted uh, after the resign phase. There we go. Uh, Matthew Hall there comes back. The NHL goalie coach, though, said no, so I'll have to offer him more money. I really like the fact, I think he was like A for teaching, but he had a C coach influence, which is actually uh, quite high for a goalie coach. Goligoski there said yes. Same with Peckham. Some of just like the prospect guys. Monahan. Returns to Calgary. Ridley Gregg joined the team. There's the meme league goalie, Vitaloma. That is awesome. And next year, guys, are looking for a new NHL assistant coach. This guy here's got A minus coach influence. That's the most important stat for a coach. Uh, teaching, I would say, for the AHL coaches because you have a lot younger players. But NHL team, coach influence, defensive team specialist, Jensen here. I'm just kind of, you know, trying to bring in a new coach basically because I don't know what's going on with the playoffs. Trying to do everything I can to make this team better. In a week into frame, see guys, just find another steal of a contract. Julian Gauthier, 83 overall now, only wants 850k. I mean, that's insane. We'll do the two years, we'll do 900k. Hopefully he says yes. Uh, if you look at him there, shot accuracy isn't the greatest, but it's powerful, good power forward, really good physical five stars. I think he'll be fine on the fourth line. And so I noticed guys, we might have too many contracts to get Gauthier signed, so I'm offering up Tyler Boucher here to the Devils. 25, only a 74 still, so he busts in this sim. Goulet here, 2155. 
I don't see, you know, turning out because I think he's just too low rated. Third and fourth, I will definitely take back. They say no. I mean, the third looks to have too low value, so what about a third and a sixth there? There we go. So again, just continue to pick up picks. I mean, look at that next year's draft. Tons of picks there. If our scouts continue to, you know, do well, find these gems, that's going to put us in a very good position. Obviously, only have three years left here to win a second Stanley Cup, but doing everything I can, just the playoff sim hates us. Julian Gauthier there does accept that offer we made him. And so we're down the fall here, guys, and I still have to sign Solomonson. We have 2.8 million in cap space. He wants 2.6. We have just enough. <laughs> Two years, 825k. I mean, that's got to be some sort of glitch. Three years there, 2.2 million. We have three years left. That would actually pay him, I think, till he's done growing. So let's try and do, like, three years there, exactly what he's asking for. 2.2 million. Could, you know, save a bit of money on the two-year, but I feel like by the third year, we'd still like him. And that's a great, great contract. I'm not sure what's going on there with like that kind of second year glitch. Let's see, what is he gonna say? Hopefully he says yes, there we go. He grows into like 85 or higher, it's an even better deal. All right guys, we're now to start next season. I'm gonna show what the lines are looking like. I feel like, again, this team is pretty good. We really just have to get lucky in the playoffs. I've got Huberto back in the first line. And that somehow makes him play worse, especially when playing with McDavid as his center. I don't understand this game. Gensel there's on the right wing. You got Blue in there on the second line of Lindholm and Jackman. Jackman and Lindholm here are the same faceoff staff, but Lindholm's got the quick draw X Factor, so that's why I went with him at center. Obviously, that top six, all game plus five. Coronado, Geeky, and Lambert there on the third line. Still the young gun line, although they are like in their mid 20s now. Fourth line here is all new. We got Greg there, left wing. Protus in the middle. Gothi on the right wing. Gothi there, you can see five star physical. Same with Protus. Greg there was kind of just the best fit. Unfortunately, Monaghan had terrible chemistry on the fourth line. Um, even Matthew Phillips actually didn't have the best chemistry, so he's in the AHL now. Defensively here, we still have Uyghur and Nemich top pair, although Uyghur's now an 85 at 34, so definitely overpaid at 10.7. Luckily, only one year left on that deal. Kiva Hardy's now an 87, playing on the second pair with Solomonson, who's actually kind of a really good complement there with the 90D awareness, 90 stick check. And then bottom pair here, actually, Colby Curry's finally made the NHL team, 21 years old, 80 overall, medium elite there. Offensive defenseman drafted fourth round 2025. Look at this guy's stats 91 passing, 95 slap shot, and wrist shot accuracy with pretty solid defensive stats. Like, this guy's gonna be awesome, I think. He's playing with Hanfin there again, a plus two. Goaltending hasn't changed. Andre's still starting 90 overall. Wolf there backing him up. Now, in terms of the AHL team, they are stacked again. So, you got Pelche, Monahan, and this Connor Prospect first line. We just trade for him. 79 medium elite drafted there by Montreal, fourth overall 2027. Like, what a first line. Second line, Vestline and Lapierre Stillman. You got Phillips on the third line with Zeri and this Crutchman prospect. Beck, Huckins, and Morgan Geeky on the fourth line. Defensively here, Solon Douglas. Mendoza, 1976 medium elite, playing with Stanley. Why not and leave there on the bottom pair. Goaltending, 282 overall goalies. Christy Harris, 21 years old, high elite. Vitalomas, 25 medium elite. Like this HL team absolutely stacked so obviously too we got a ton of options we want to upgrade the team can maybe package some of the guys in the AHL with somebody just kind of really give, give us a good shot there at making a deep run although like I said the team is pretty good I think maybe we could do something around like Uyghur plus and bring in a 90 plus defenseman but as you guys can see here ratings 99 offense 89 defense 91 goaltending so not too bad definitely though like I said some changes could be made hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did leave that thumbs up if you guys haven't subscribed yet hit sub button down below and as always guys thank you so much for watching have a nice day Goodbye.